It's Python on Hardware time. Blinka, blinka, blinka. All right, so. What's new? This week, the headline generator machine what is it? <laughs> yeah. generated the following. CircuitPython snakes its way to the Micro Center. Yeah. Yep, in the most recent newsletter from Micro Center, check out Blinka. You yeah, stop, he's there. Stop by Micro Center and get all the CircuitPython powered boards and all your favorite boards from Adafruit. So we worked with Andy over at Micro Center. Go to the store, buy CircuitPython boards there, say you want more CircuitPython stuff, and they'll do it and they'll listen to you. Next up. Um, we had a new series of, uh, of, of things in the newsletter yeah. that, that, we, that we like. Um, this one is, what is uh, Brian and Dan Willis up to? So what are Brian and Dan Willis up to? Well, I, I like this. This is my favorite part of the newsletter every week now because we do so much stuff that I feel like sometimes it doesn't get captured because we're moving so fast. And I know. Unless we have a blog post or just something. So this is a really easy way to see what some of the team is working on who works on CircuitPython and some of the hardware that you know and love. Yes. Uh, Brian wrote the circuit Python driver for the MSA 301, low cost 3 axis accelerometer, and wrote the guide to go along with it. Afterwards, he assembled and started the process of testing prototypes of the TLV 493 board design by Catney. Yep, and he actually got the driver done yesterday or today. Good work. Yay. Dan this Debug. is a cute blink. Yep. Look at this. This is Dan in costume. Um, Dan Debug BLE on the new Circuit Playground Express Bluefruit. And it's now working fine. He got BLE HID keyboard working from CircuitPython, sending keystrokes over BLE to Linux, Windows, Mac OS, and Android. And he is still debugging iOS support. It's hard. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but Melissa finished up adding CircuitPython display quick start section to the last three display guides. After that, Melissa wrote up a guide for controlling an RGB message panel from Stream Deck. The guide includes the first design done in Fusion 360. Congratulations, Melissa. Yay. On that. Okay. Next up, um, I put this as a, as a feature because I think this is a big deal. Yes, um, we have a new guide from Catney yeah. on PyLinting. So we use PyLint uh, for all of our 180 or so uh, um, drivers and of course the hundreds of uh, example codes. We use PyLint to lint our code to make sure that it is as pretty looking as possible and also um, doesn't have a lot of the common mistakes that uh, people do when they're coding. Um, or things that make it hard to understand, because uh, Python is, you know, it's a little, a little bit picky about, you know, things like uh, tabs versus spaces and how long lines are. So uh, people who have never used lint before are like, what, you know, I'm trying to add some code or I'm trying to fix a bug. I mean, it's PyLint error. What is this? How do I fix it? So you forget all about that. Katni, who is uh, queen of PyLinting, uh, went through some tips and tricks on how to get PyLint running locally on your computer so you don't have to wait for uh, CI or Travis to run it, and also how to fix common issues and some things that can come up while you're linting that might seem like setbacks but are actually successes. Okay, Hackspace Magazine. Circuit Python snakes his way back to Hackspace Magazine. In fact, it's on the cover. I like that they're doing, like every month, they have a little bit with Circuit Python, which is really cool. We're, you know, we're working really hard to have almost daily or weekly new features, new guys, new capabilities. And uh, we try to make it as easy as possible for people to do stuff with CircuitPython. And I think that if you have a weekly magazine, having like a half a page or a quarter page with whatever's new in CircuitPython, you'll always have something new. Yeah. You know, you'll have content. <laughs> they're, they're once a month and they uh, do a really good job. This is a lot. Um, take it from me, someone had to work on a quarterly magazine. So they have um, some graphic couple, stuff? Couple uh, features, control the screen with CircuitPython and graphical output for almost any board. Both of those are CircuitPython related. Yep. Next up, uh, Scott was on a podcast. We posted that in the newsletter. You can listen to the whole thing. It's about 35 minutes. It's testing code, Python testing and development, episode 84, CircuitPython with Scott Shawcroft. Talks about CircuitPython, um, all the testing, all of the things that go into CircuitPython, Blinka, the library that allows you to use CircuitPython APIs for non-CircuitPython versions, such as CPython on Linux and MicroPython, including Raspberry Pi, all that and more. Next up, if you want to learn all about gaming using CircuitPython, there is a workshop by DeshiPoo at yes. Flip the World. Yes, pew pew. This is in Zurich. And um, you can uh, learn more about it. You can follow DeshiPoo on Twitter, but you can also go to flicktheworld.ch. All right. Cedar Grove, who I think is in the chat tonight. Shout out to Cedar Grove. This is a um, digipot. Yeah, always coming up with good hardware, so we like to feature it. Um, thanks for tagging us this, uh, when, when you make these. This is the AD5245 uh, digital pot breakout from Cedar Grove. 
check That's it out nice. on GitHub and more. Um, speaking of hardware, Feather takes flight with the XB3 boards from SparkFun. Yeah, this is a Feather compatible. They don't call Feather, they call it Thing Plus, and it's a little bit longer, but you can use Feather Wings with it. That's right. And now it's using the XB modules. I didn't know they had these little uh, wireless modules. I don't use, honestly, I actually don't use XBs that much. I've kind of moved on to doing Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and LoRa. Um, XB most, has their own version of uh, MicroPython, too, so if you're interested yeah, in MicroPython, this might be you. For can you can run MicroPython on these, and then... Um, using our Blinka compatibility layer, you can probably run our drivers. Um, I haven't tried it, but I think somebody should, and they'll probably find success. Okay. Speaking of feathers and more, um, over on the MicroPython GitHub, you can see looks like MicroPython support is There's coming activity. to the Feather M0 Express, the uh -huh. Adafruit Itsy Bitsy M4, the Trinket M0, the Mini Sam. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of there's so a Sam lot of Sam D, stuff. Coming. Sam D's coming. So the the thing I will mention is that this got merged recently. It's only I think the USB REPL right now. It's using teeny USB. You can get a REPL. I don't believe there's any hardware interfacing yet, but that's coming. If, if next. you're really into this, you you know what this is about, and you're going to check it out. Yeah. Okay. And maybe have them out. Next up, um, Nordic announced that they have their uh, Thingy ninety one. It's nordicsemi.com slash Thingy ninety one. And uh, it has one of our favorite chips on it. also has some cellular. So we'll figure out if there is something that we can do with this. Next up. Nice. On the show and tell, Scott mentioned this, but I also wanted to screenshot it. So we posted up this video and Gadget, um, I worked at a long time ago, posted up a video of Playdate and they went through some of the development, some of the testing, and they also said, never going to be a lockdown device. So for us, that's very interesting. And Scott's going to be at PAX asking them, um, what we can do to get Circuit Python and more running on it. I think we'd have a really big developer community, and that's what it's all about, making games. So I think that'll be kind of cool. Um, the opposite of a open device is when things get locked down. And it looks like, and this is, you know, I'm on these calculator sites. You're like on the calculator. I am on the, yeah, yeah and is, it is a site. This is TI Planet. This is TI Planet. And TI Planet. It's a said, planet. And TI Planet said, hey, like, looks like TI is locking down third party firmware on the calculators that originally started supporting CircuitPython, it was a version of CircuitPython, then they called it something else, and now it's a little unclear about the future of putting third-party firmware on the TI Python module and or the calculator. So we'll see. Little bit of unknowns. Um, hopefully they'll allow people to do that if they really want to. Maybe they could just agree agree that my calculator might not work afterwards. I think hacking stuff is, is kind of... If you're hacking your calculator, you know what? You're you're in the good spot. I mean, they benefited but, from using open yeah. source circuit Python. So. Yeah, so I think I think TI should uh, allow this. Okay, uh, next up, we're still on the the watch for um, a RISC five device that has lots of RAM and USB. This Getting one has, closer. This one has a little bit of RAM, but it has USB. This is a Giga device. It's the GD thirty two V RISC five. Yes, yeah, a Giga device. We actually use their flash, the QSPY flash we use on our boards. is from Giga device. It's, yeah. it's high quality. Um, Espressif also uses the GD uh, so, QSPY flash, and they're they're also well known for making STM32 compatibles, um, not licensing STM32 design, but making pin pin yeah. compatible boards. So this is similar. This is kind of like an STM32 pin compatible, but it uses Risk Five. And like I said, it's it's getting closer because it has native full speed USB, but it doesn't have a lot of RAM. We need a little bit more memory if we're going to use this. Yeah. for Circuit Python, hopefully but like 64K or more. We'll be there. But we'll get oh, there. That's why. So that's why we, we put this. It's like, hey, here's the direction things are going. Uh, we joined the RISC V Foundation. We have some uh, RISC V uh, feathers planned and more. So anywho. And then uh, this was on the PyCon blog. Next year, 2020, April 15th to the 23rd, PyCon is going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're probably going to go because that's Yeah, that's pretty right. close. Yeah. And... Uh, We'll see folks there probably. We'll probably do something as well. And uh, it's close to us, so looking forward to that. And then up until September 2nd, there is a massive Python programming humble bundle. Uh, it benefits foundations and charities. Check it out. You can get like 360 something dollars worth of stuff. And it's DRM free, multi format, and lots of good things. This one is by No Starch Press and Humble Bundle. And with that, is the Python on Hardware News. That's the Blinken News. Okay.